Hi guys, uh, this is Jonathan Lambert here with the Mathematics Development and Support Service at the National College of Ireland. And this video today, this short video, uh, I suppose is just an overview of the types of uh, types of probabilities with respect to the standard normal curve or standard normal distribution that we're going to be we're going to be uh, considering uh, over this short uh, video series uh, there's basically seven types of curves that we'll be dealing with and we're going to call them type 1 type 2 type 3 all the way through to type 7 probabilities okay so this video is going to deal with uh, areas uh, under the standard normal distribution under the standard normal curve okay uh, and as I said we'll have uh, seven types of probabilities or seven types of areas that will be required to calculate so let's have a look at the type 1 areas I suppose type 1 type 2 and type 3 will deal with positive bounds with respect to the z variable okay so type 1 uh, type 1 areas, uh, type 1, uh, they're going to be uh, things like where we have to calculate the probability of observing a z-score that's less than a particular positive value. Now if we want to uh, calculate this particular probability, I suppose the first thing we should do is we should we should build a graphical picture of the probability. And what we're dealing with is we're dealing with the z variable, uh, which is the variable associated with the standard normal curve. So if we were to draw the uh, probability that this represents, it's a standard normal curve, so it's a bell-shaped curve centered on zero. The horizontal axis represents the z variable. And we're dealing with positive uh, values, so uh, x1 is going to be a positive value, so it's going to be on the right-hand side of 0, so let's say x1 is here. And what we're interested in is we're interested in calculating the probability of ob observing a z value that's less than x1. Well, all the z values that are less than x1 are to the left-hand side of x1, so really what we need to be able to calculate is the area under the curve to the left-hand side of our positive x1 value. Okay, so we'll have a short video on type 1 areas uh, to come later on. Uh, the next type of video we're going to have is going to be dealing with what we're going to call type, type 2 areas. Uh, in this case, once again, it's similar to the type 1 area, but this time we're, uh, we're interested in calculating the probability of observing a z-score that's greater than a particular positive value. Once again, that's with respect to the standard normal distribution, so it's a bell-shaped curve centered on zero, and the horizontal axis represents our z-variable. So the probabilities we want are z values greater than a particular positive value, x1. So it's a positive value, x1, so let's say x1 is over here somewhere. It's to the right-hand side of 0, and we're interested in the probability that z is greater than x1. So we're interested in the area under the curve on the right-hand side of x1, or really we're interested in calculating a right-hand tail area. Okay, so that's type 2 probabilities. The type 3 probabilities that we're going to deal with uh, uh, are probabilities where we have a lower bound and an upper bound, and both of these bounds are positive, positive values. So we're interested in calculating the probability of observing a z-score that's greater than a particular value, let's call that x1, and that's less than another value, let's call that x2. Okay, once again, it's a standard normal variable, so we're going to be dealing with a standard normal curve. It's a bell-shaped curve, centered on zero. The horizontal axis represents our z variable. And x1 and x2 are two positive values. Uh, so let's say x1 is here, and let's say x2 is here. So we have to calculate the probability of observing a z value, or z score, between x1 and x2. So in this situation here, we're really being asked, can you tell me what the area is under the curve between x1 and x2? Okay. So that's type 1, type 2, and type 3 probabilities. And you'll see many of them, particular types of calculations, in the assignment that's associated with this particular video series. So type 1, type 2, and type 3 simply deal with positive bounds. Okay. So let's have a look at some negative scenarios. Okay, so let's call these type, let's call these type 
type 4 probabilities. And the type 4 probability is going to be exactly the same as the type 1 probability. Uh, but in this case, the bound is going to be a negative value. So what we're interested in is we're interested in calculating the probability of observing a z-score that's less than a particular negative value. Let's call it x1. And once again, it's a standard normal curve associated with the z variable. So the distribution is a bell-shaped curve centered on 0. The horizontal axis represents the z variable. And x1 is a negative value, so x1 is going to be over here somewhere, on the left-hand side of 0. What we're interested in is the probability of observing a z score or z variable score that's less than x1. So all the z variable scores less than x1 are to the left of x1. So we're interested in can you tell me what the area is on the left hand side of x1? Or as we call these, this is a left hand tail calculation. The next type of area is similar to the type 2 areas, but where x1 is negative, uh, we call this a type 5 area. So our type 5 areas, okay, is the probability of observing a z-score greater than, let's say, x1. Once again, it's a standard normal distribution, a bell-shaped curve, centered on 0. Horizontal axis represents the z-variable. x1 is going to be a negative value this time, so let's place that to the left-hand side of 0 here. And we're interested in the probability that z is greater than x1. Or in other words, can you tell me the area under the curve to the right hand side of x1? Because that's where all the positive, or that's where all the z scores reside that are greater than x1. So it's really, can you tell me the area in this side of the distribution, or under the distribution to the right hand side of x1? And then we have, I suppose, let's call these, and I'm going to do this a little bit lower here, let's call these uh, type type 6 probabilities, where we're given two bounds, similar to the type 3 probabilities, but in the type 3 probabilities, the two bounds, x1 and x2, were positive values, okay? In this situation, our type 6 probabilities are going to be negative values, and what we're interested in is the probability of observing a z-score that's greater than a negative value, and less than another negative value, which we'll call x1 and x2. Okay, so the curve for this particular distribution looks something like this, centered on zero. The horizontal axis represents the z-axis. x1 is negative, let's place x1 over here. x2 is negative, let's place x2 over here. And we're interested in what's the area or what's the uh, probability of a z-score between those two values. So really we're asked, being asked, can you tell me the area between those two values here? Okay. So there are, I suppose, six types at this stage. We have tr type 1 to type 3 deals with positive bounds. Type 4 to type 6 deal with negative areas or negative bounds. I suppose what we could do is we could bring these together, positive and negatives, and maybe create what's called, let's call it, a type 7. A type 7 probability, okay? And that would be something like, what's the probability that z is greater than a particular x value, okay? Let's say that's negative, and less than another x value, let's say that's positive, okay? And the area for this, or the distribution for this particular type of curve, we'll just do this a little bit smaller, would look something like this. The horizontal axis represents the z axis. x1 is going to be negative, it's over here. x2 is going to be positive, which is over here, and we're interested in the probability of observing a z-score between those two bounds. So the calculation is, can you tell me the area between those two there? And this is our type 7 probability, and our type 7 probability, I suppose, relies, it relies on our positive calculations, and it relies on our negative calculations. Okay, so that's just an overview of the seven types of videos that are going to that are going to precede uh, this particular uh, overview. Uh, and sure, I'll talk to you soon. Okay, so thanks for your time. Bye bye.